hi you guys okay snowfall season five episode three lions franklin is meeting up with his crew and i mean everybody louis jerome leon um ronnie and tricks and peaches and i think this is pretty much everyone in franklin's crew he's telling them that teddy has returned and grady has ghost and yesterday's prices of ten a key will remain. Black Diamond is asking what did Grady say exactly. Y'all know that was her little boo thing, her sneaky leap. And Jerome asks is if Reed had killed Grady. Franklin replies to both of them, I don't know. Nor does he know a reason that he would want to kill him. So Leon is like, I do. You and Grady was running around here like Bert and Ernie. He wanted to send a message that you would hear. Louis said, you mean in addition to Alton? Did he say what happened to Alton yet? Franklin asked, answered no. And he said, whatever happened to Alton, he brought on himself. Now, Louis, she's pressing this price chains she done made promises that need to be honored she figures if she can talk to reed that she can change his mind franklin told her to let him handle it and reed doesn't need to know the business is falling off right now and the prices will remain ten a key for right now now this leaves louis to have to break her promise to scully she meets up with his boy Mello, and she tells him that she couldn't get that price cut they were originally meeting up to do a, a drop um she give them the drugs and they pay for it. So Mello was like, I can't make that call. You put us in a bad position going back to have to tell him this. So Cornbread is like, fuck that. Y'all tell him. Scully honors God, samurais, and spirits. I ain't fucking with that crazy nigga. Jerome asks, Would, will this be a problem? And Mello said, well, he has good days and some are bad. Just pray for a good day. Later that day, Louis speaks with Mello and Mello was like, you didn't pray for that good day. And Louis said, how bad is it? Mello said, it's Tiana's birthday bad. Scully is back on his best bullshit. On his biblical punishment shit. Cornbread is on his knees blindfolded. While uh, Scully is quoting the book of Proverbs with a uh, sword in his hand. And Scully is demanding to see Louis and Jerome right now. When Louis and Jerome get down to Inglewood, Scully has three people standing outside on cylinder blocks with signs that read. One was a thief. One had a sign that read Judas. And another one said, jokes are not funny. I mean, Scully is crazy as shit. Scully got the music blast and he got a seance with, of uh, Tiana with all these balloons around it and shit like that. Honoring her birthday. And Cornbread is still on his knees and he's talking about, it's not my fault, it's their fault. And Scully chops his fucking ear off talking about the next time, listen. I mean, crazy, real, real sinister. Scully basically tells them, look, lying to me isn't loyalty. And Louis said, we didn't lie. We were told one thing and it, and now it's another and it's out of our hands. Well, Scully don't give a fuck. He said, y'all told him ten a key and that's what the fuck it's going to be. You said it and you owe me. You know that. This is what he telling Lloyd. Seeing as though they're in a position where they can't win and walk out their door alive, Lloyd's like, okay, well, look, we'll do that. When Louis and Jerome leaves, Scully is talking to Mello and he thinks that Louis and Jerome is playing possum. Because if they can't do what they promise, they can't be trusted. Now, Louis realized she done fucked up. She realized that they're not really going to make a profit off the bricks that they selling to Scully. So really, they're in business with a madman for nothing. So Louis has an idea. Mello to them is seeming like he's itching to be boss. So Louis plans to use that against Scully. Franklin tells Veronique that Grady's house needs to go on the market. He's out and Teddy is back. So um, Veronica is like, Teddy? And Franklin said, read. The look on Veronique's face is like, God damn it. Although she never met Reed personally, if Franklin discussed th certain things with her, I'm sure she has an understanding as to what this means for Franklin in their future. She already was concerned with Franklin being wrapped up and messed with Grady. And Grady was more 
easy going opposed to read. Veronique asks Franklin if Teddy mentioned what happened to Alton and how does he feel about this. Franklin tells her that he didn't ask um, about Alton at that moment and that he don't know what to feel. We need him as, and as long as money is rolling in, they're good right now. And Veronica looks uneasy with Franklin response. I can understand what she feels. She just talked this over with Franklin about Grady. So what does this mean for their future now that Reed is back in the picture? Louis is putting, setting up this plan in motion to put Mello up against Scully. So she turns to Ronnie and Trix. She needs them to whisper in Mello ear and remind him of his potential you know uh stroke his ego so to speak so tricks her name is dallas but i call her tricks she said y'all stay playing us to the left because she feels as though like okay you sending us to do these small ass jobs like you know we supposed to be working under the same network and jerome is like hey oh you think if it was left up to me y'all bitches still be alive so tricks is like look Come on now, we've been hospitable ever since. We've been on an even field. Y'all stay tripping. So Lily said, well, let's just call it the pass if y'all help me out with this. So Ronnie said, okay, we'll set it up. And she apologized to Lloyd for shooting her. I don't understand why they still in a circle as well. I would not trust these bitches. We see Teddy going back to his old office um, when he was Reed. And we see him putting all... It, it was left exactly the way he left it. Um, it's like if you, as an adult, go back inside your teenage bedroom that you had at your parents' house. And it's this reminders of his old behavior. He has, you know, um, the coke is still there from last year. The alcohol, just per chaos that he's left to clean up. And you see that he's boxing everything away. And he comes across this, the picture of his brother, I think that was. And I think that's what kills Reed the most is that his he sacrificed his brother for this. And that eats at him um, really bad, I think. But he's boxing Reed away. And he's thinking that he could just box it up and put it away. But he has to deal with things that Teddy has to deal with things that Reed did when Reed was walling. And we find that he had he's facing this when he has his conversation with Franklin. Franklin called him out for one to discuss the pricing on the, the market pricing on the Coke. So if Reed thing is, look, oh, I understand exactly about competitive pricing and everything, but that's not the problem. My prices are at market level. Reed goes on to tell Franklin, look, what I can't understand is how did you become the middleman in your own organization? If Louis and Jerome is off doing their thing, why should they ever get the the prices that you get you're paying for? If they're not in your network, then they now became your competitor, Franklin. That's just business. Reed goes on to say, look, don't come at me with the bullshit. Get your house in order first. He asks Franklin, why did you really call me down here? Reed tells Franklin, look, I don't know anything that happened to Alton. As soon as um, your parents touched down in Cuba, it's a number of agencies that would have been on them. Although... Alton's ties to the Black Panthers would have made him a high profile client. If he wasn't willing to corroborate, they either killed him or he could be in a Cuban jail cell. Reed swears to Franklin that he just don't know. Reed tries to manipulate it, saying that t putting in Franklin head how he wasn't in Franklin life for a long time. Then he pops up, Franklin cleans him up, and then he portrays him. He says to Franklin, this must be hard for you, but I'm sorry, I had nothing to do with anything. Earlier in the episode, Franklin refers to Reed and Grady's situation as lions eating their young. Franklin had it all wrong. The lion is teddy that's gonna eat his young franklin and i think franklin realizes this we see that reed he thinks that he made or he knows that he made franklin he gave franklin the tools that he needs and what when does a lion eat their young when they feel like they are no use to them anymore 
he probably feels like Franklin got too powerful, got too much and full of himself. So Franklin will be a, a use to him anymore. Franklin is getting arrogant in his own way, asking for price cuts and shit. And, and Teddy feels like he over here trying to fund a war. If Franklin doesn't fall in line, what use is Franklin to him? <laughs> Franklin tells Ree, look, do me a favor and don't pop up at my place of business or my home or anywhere unexpected ever again. Teddy agrees and he tells Franklin that he's going to meet up with Gustavo to do the switch tonight. Teddy is a bit shook of Franklin. When Teddy was in his office and he hears footsteps coming up, he straight grabbed his gun. <laughs> I'm glad that Franklin got him on his toe shook. But he grabbed his gun and it's just Gustavo. So he plays it off and he asks Gustavo, is he going to be good with meeting with Franklin tonight? And Gustavo's like, sure, you know, he's easy going. Franklin is getting his funds together to meet up with Gustavo to do the exchange. And Peaches, poor Peaches, he is just, he still has this virus, in which y'all already know what I said. This is the AIDS virus. And um, he's not getting better. And Franklin tells him, look, I got this drop. You just sit this one out. And we know that Franklin is overprotective of verbal need. He tells Peaches to just lay back and get better. Peaches insists. And he's like, no, it's bigger than you and me. It's, it's about verbal need. I don't want you to get, give her whatever you have. And... <laughs> Peaches didn't oblige no father. He just was like, okay, cool. And he goes to slap Franklin a five. And Franklin's like, uh-uh, nigga. But this is going to be so touchy if that's where they're going with this, which I think that's what it is. I mean, he done had, it's been three weeks now, he done had this illness. But it will be real. Franklin meets up with Oso to do the exchange. And Franklin asks Oso, what what what's up with this new spot? Was this your idea? And Oso's like, nope, not mine. Franklin get the ask in twenty one questions, and Oso is like, I don't know nothing. Which I don't think Oso knows what the fuck Teddy is thinking or what he's up to. So Franklin goes on to, and he's like, you know, Grady had business and personal endeavors we had tied up, so I don't understand why he would just up and disappear. And then Franklin is looking around like, hold up, a light bulb. He had a light bulb moment like, this nigga could be listening. So he was like, you know what? Grady was a clown. You know, he was going to bring the whole operation down to anyway, playing it off. And <laughs> also don't know shit. But see, also is not a worry to Teddy right now. All also wants to do is take care of his family, the family that fell upon him, okay? Also is just like Leon that you know, I love me some Oso. Lee I love me some Leon, but Leon is, you know, he's younger, so I would marry Leon. I would marry Oso. Oso probably bury all his money in the dirt. Um, up under the house all he want to do is provide he don't he's not extravagant and flashy he just want to get by just franklin says out loud that he's glad that teddy's back so business can go back to where it used to be and also was like okay this is weird and sure enough teddy was right there listening okay over at louis bar it's a packed house and Bo is there on his best bullshit. He bringing a family recipe. And clearly he's on one. Louis is like, okay, this nigga is tripping. And she tries to distract him with bringing Shell up. Also, Jerome was right on time because he came up to tell Louis that he called them Bert and Aunt Ernie. But Rock, um, Ronnie and Trix was downstairs waiting for her. So Lloyd makes her way out to go meet up with them and Bo going to grab her by her hand. And he was like, you know, this recipe is miss missing some red meat. I'm going to need what I asked you for. He's speaking of he need that pawn that he can use to take back to his job. Somebody that he can do a big bus on. Lloyd gets him in order. She's like, look, I told you that I'm going to need a little more time. Okay chill the fuck out crazy man ronnie and Trix is telling lloyd that 
they got Puff the Magic Dragon to apply that pressure on Melo to see if he'll crack like he on some ball shit. Melo sitting up there talking about he don't work for nobody. He his own boss. And if the fuck she there to dance for a boss, then she need to get naked. Puff came back and told Ronnie and Trix that, yeah, he definitely feeling himself. He paid me $2,000 to get naked. Yeah. And when Puff asked for her money for doing the services on a Tuesday night, they going to play her because she got $2,000. That's some hating ass shit. That's why I called them Ronnie and Trix. They, that's some hater shit. They should have paid her the money. She did the service. They should have been fair. Jerome is like me. He's not really feeling these bitches. When they leave, he said... They said to self that they go with the highest bidder. And we just put money in their pocket. What part of the game is that? I feel you, Jerome, because this is a dirty game. And these hoes aren't loyal. And Louis shows Jerome how her investment paid off. When they meet up with Mello, and he tells them that Scully wants to take them out. And with Scully out the way, that he is willing to pay 12 a key. And he's going to take the spot, just like that. He tells them that Scully is going to see a psychic tomorrow to talk to Tiana for her birthday. And he will be a alone so louis said okay well handle that and then call us when you're done and he's like no he wants them to do it because he can't take the throne if he had ties to his death and he's willing to pay a hundred thousand for scully's death louis said okay since you insist the next morning louis and jerome go over to the psychic and make her an offer that she can't refuse when scully gets there Jerome and Louis runs down on him. He's like, oh shit. Jerome tells him Mello wants your spot and he told us that you was going to take us out on the next drop. But instead of killing him, they call uh, Mello down to the club and they tell him it's done. So Mello is like, it's mighty quiet. Nobody's talking about it. I'm going to need a little bit more proof than that. Jerome gives Mello Scully's chain with his daughter on it with the locket with his daughter. Remember back in the eighties and nineties, it that was a symbol. If you when you kill when a street person kill another street person, they would take that chain as proof. Mello picked that chain up and he said the keys to the motherfucking kingdom, and he was like, "I gotta play the part, so it's gonna take a couple weeks. Pull some liquor out for the dead homies and stuff." Next thing you see is some doors fly open and Scully come out that motherfucker. <laughs> Scully snaps Mello's neck and half, quoting scriptures, and he told the other uh, guys that was with Mello that they going out uh, to the white room. He got he gonna do some sinister shit to them. Um, Scully asks Louis and Jerome, "It's a cold game that we're in. Why didn't you take the shot when you had the chance to?" Louis tells him, "Yes, it is a cold game that we're in, but we found warmth at that hospital that day." Jerome gives Scully back his chain and he tells Scully, we do owe you honor. And Scully told Jerome to keep the chain. Let his angel be a reminder to Jerome that no one controls you. Everyone is their own person. Scully agrees to go back to the original price of 12 a key. And he also told them to keep that juju money of 100000 that was on his head. Child, when they left, Louie cleans up her office, kicks her feet up, and sigh. Louie, she straightened this one out, <laughs> but she haven't even seen the tip of the iceberg yet. Veronica want to celebrate the proposal deal that they closed on. And Franklin is not there at all. He is thinking about what he found when he went back to the drop-off spot that him and Gustavo met up with, and he found that... Yeah, what he was feeling was true. Teddy was indeed spying on him. Veronica asks him, is this about Teddy? Franklin lies to her and tells her that it isn't. He also tells her that no meditation or cleanses will do at this moment. And she's like, you know, I wasn't even thinking about that. I wanted to give you some loving, you know? Franklin is so fucked up. He in the head, he can't even focus on that. He's like, look, I got to take a range. 
check today. Wanda pops up and she interrupts their little happy hour. She pulls Franklin up and she says, you know, Franklin, I was eavesdropping in on. I'm sorry about that. But I heard that Betty had some water on her knees. And if you ain't know, I used to run track in high school and I can go up there and collect that rent. And I used to work with my daddy doing construction so I can fix some things as well. Baby Wanda is just selling herself because she going crazy not being productive. Wanda done fixed her hair. She didn't put her best shit on. She's looking good. On the journey to recovery, it is important that you have purpose in your life. So this would be positive if Franklin can get her on a um a, a good job, uh, maybe there at the, the real estate company or something. I know last episode, I did say that I hope her and Leon get back together, but she does not need to be around any drugs or drug activity. It's too tempting right now. Franklin tells her to hang tight that he'll, he, he'll see what he can do. And lastly, Franklin meets up with Jerome and Lloyd to do the drop give them their supplies so louis is still on his price cut shit everybody's like oh gosh even jerome is like we're not going to do this she's like no we're going to do this today so frankly comes out with it he's like he's not the problem it's y'all that's the problem this little experiment here is not working how about y'all come on back i'm willing to split it with y'all 50 50 we just have to be all under one umbrella. So Louis is like, no, no, because I don't want to put my life at, I mean, our life in danger. So Louis is very self-centered. Like I said, it's always about her. When Jerome has been by her side since day one, and you ain't think to say we from the beginning. At one point, Jerome tried to step in and say he's tired of the shit between the two of them. And Louis tells him, nope, this is between me and him. And Jerome said, well, handle it, Dad. Franklin is like, see, it's that shit right there that tells me that it wasn't Jerome's decision to separate. It was always your decision. And because you've been through some traumatic shit, I let it go. So Jerome is like you let it go he's getting offended like you you don't tell us what you let go and what you don't let go so franklin's like okay uh you want to step up now enlighten me tell me what the fuck do she want jerome tells him no motherfucker you ask her what she want and franklin said okay queen louis what does queen louis want Lori talking about she don't want to be underneath some anyone's thumb and franklin said look i hate to break this to you but Everyone is under someone's thumb, even me. I have to answer to the person that may have possibly off my father. And if we don't move this product, he will do the same to us. I want to be here to spend the money that I worked hard for. So I don't want to hear shit about no kilos or no price drop. If you want to go out on your own, fuck it. Bye. But don't fuck up what I got going on because I promise you it's nothing that I'm not prepared to do. Franklin is absolutely right on this one. And I believe him when he said it's nothing that he's not prepared to do. And that said, Louis needed this reality check and Jerome needed to step up, step up to his woman and let her know that things ain't always sweet. And I think this is where the African proverb is going to come in. Um, if you want to go fast go by yourself if you want to go far take people with you and will franklin go fast and far with veronique mm -mm. because louis and louis is definitely i think gonna go on her own and like i said she thinks shit is sweet and she's gonna face a many a challenges this is just one that by the skin of her teeth, she got away with. But there will be others. Some that she can't get out of. Well, that's where the episode ends. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.